From the vice of Matt Bennett comes the Lunch Money, a fast and friendly single hook streamer that can be easily adapted to your home fishery. Hey everyone, Matt here with the Northern Angler in Traverse City, Michigan. You can find all the materials for this fly and lots more at thenorthernangler.com. This is a fly I've been carrying in my box for years. I recommend it to tires all the time because it's an easy size to manage at the vise and you can quickly crank out a few when you have a trip the next day. It's not super flashy, which I like. There are plenty of other flashy patterns out there. Instead, this fly relies on a simple blend of natural and synthetic materials to create a fly we love for trout and bass. All right, let's get started with your hook securely in the vise. Start your thread right at the eye. And we're just gonna build a little bit of thread base. Hooks are very slippery, uh, as you probably know. So if we can add just a little bit of thread to help hang on to those slippery eyes and those slippery hooks, make your life easier. Putting about six wraps in each direction, that tends to even things out put one or two wraps around and then I invert these. You know, this was, like I mentioned, originally a fly designed to ride inverted, but I just, uh, for my water and, uh, you know, for the fly's sake, I think it's a little bit better like this for my needs. All right, eyes are secure. I'm gonna bring this thread back just laying down a thread base all the way to the barb. And then I'm gonna come back to the hook point. This is really important for proportions. If, if you tie your rabbit in at the very back, it's, it's just gonna to be too full. So more than you need. Less is more. This is a, a quick, easy fly that doesn't use too many materials, which is why we like it. Simple is better. You want to expose the hide. I really like using a bodkin for this. You can make sure you wrap it in securely. I'm going to bring it back. Usually overall length of this tail is around two inches. A loose wrap. Make sure this stays on top. I give it three or four really nice secure wraps. Fold that back, and you're going to advance your thread up to just behind the eyes. From there, we're going to preen this back, and you're going to give this hide a few wraps. Really, two is about all you'll need. There's two, and look at that, we're right up at our thread. Again, use a bodkin or your scissors. Try not to trap too many fibers. And just give you a nice clean look and finish. Come in, trim the excess off. And I like to wrap back on it just a little bit, just to make sure I have all that hide secured. You can brush this out if you want, make sure it's Looking good. I won't get in the way now. Next we're going to add some silly legs here. These are fly enhancer legs. They have a cool banding, kind of a, a unique look. I'm going to put one on each side. You can, you can load this thing up if you want. Legs actually add a significant amount of weight, so I, I tend to go a little bit lighter on flies like this that I'm not looking to, to have a jig motion with. Okay, putting one in on each side, wrapping back to the rabbit. Great. Now here we get to start shaping the head. We're going to use some laser dub. I'm going to start with tan up top. Less is always more when you're working with laser dub. If you add too much, it, it can really affect 
the buoyancy of your fly and affect how it swims. So less is more. You're just pulling this apart, aligning the fibers. I'm gonna lay this down and wrap right at the middle. Put three wraps on and there will still be stuff coming out left and right. That's just how it is. I love the two-tone colors. So we're going to use white on the underside. Just that classic kind of minnow pattern. And I love the ginger and, and white. We have so much sand here in Michigan. This is a great color scheme to match any sort of river that has a lot of sand in it. This is what a lot of the bait fish will look like. Little darters. About two, maybe three wraps there. Then advance your thread in front. Doesn't look like much yet, but we're going to keep building it up. Okay, going back to tan. And I'm just pulling this stuff apart, tearing it a little bit so it's not too long. This is not an enormous fly. Lay that down. I'm tying this one right at the eyes, pretty much right on top. And that last stack will go in front. If you go heavy, go heavy on top, not underneath. That'll, that'll really turn this fly, even with the lead eyes. I've seen it happen. This is not a fly designed to push water. This is, you know, a little, little bait fish that's fleeing, trying to get away. Twist that. Take your time. Make sure it doesn't roll. This stuff likes to, to sneak out. Okay, we're gonna preen that back a little bit. Put a wrap or two in front. Before we, before we add that final stack up front, I want to add just a little bit to the cheeks, almost a hot spot, if you will. Something to grab, grab some attention. Very, very light application here, right behind the eyes. Two wraps. And this looks like a lot, but and blend it out. The head in front, the stacks in front will help mask this just a little bit. Lay that down. Just watch where your thread's going. Don't be in a rush. And we want them right behind the eyes there. Great. All right, bring your thread up for our final stacks. Here I'm going to switch to a little bit darker color. This is dark tan. Has just a little bit more flash in it too. Great way to finish the fly off. Lay that down there. And since these are the final wraps, you want to make sure these are right on top and right on the underside of the shank. So I'll put a few wraps in and then I'll actually tug up. That helps keep everything aligned. Rotate. Grab that underside color, still white. You can mix it up if you want. Just by changing the rabbit strip and the laser dub, you can match almost any bait fish you have. Roll it. Keeping this nice and light. Right on top. And I'm matching up the lengths here. Loose, wraps, then some tension, then pull up. Make sure that's right on the bottom, not sneaking out. I work everything back and I'll actually put some wraps right up against maybe even on top just to help keep everything 
in place. It still looks a little crazy. We're gonna comb it out though. But at this point, you can grab your whip finish tool. And finish that off. I'm gonna add just a little bit of glue to my thread here. Make this thing nice and durable. Trim it, call it good. Then we start to comb. This is, I know all you, you anglers aren't used to grooming, but uh, this is the time to do it. This will make the fly look really good. So just work your way around, use whatever brush or comb you like. I really like this fine wire brush for laser dub. It just cuts right through and pulls all the, the short fibers out. And you can see when this gets wet, it's just gonna slim down into a little minnow with a nice taper. Very last step, I'm gonna grab a Sharpie and we're kinda gonna blend these two together. So I'm gonna add some barring on the top. Don't worry, you don't have to be too artistic. These are just straight lines. And I usually just stick with three Is the laser dub gets too light at the back end. It just looks like it's, it's too much usually. Okay, we're gonna comb that out one last time. We'll blend that Sharpie in there a little bit too. And last, trim our legs right back where the hide ends. have it. That's the lunch money. I think it's a fly you should definitely try out. Don't forget to grab the materials list. There's a link in the description below where we've written up how we like to fish this fly and some of our favorite color combinations. Get tying everyone. Hopefully we'll see you soon in the shop or out on the water.